Hey everybody, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. This is Kana, you're in my corner, and I have a very special guest that everybody is waiting for. Would you like to introduce yourself so they can hear more of you than me? <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, my name is Micah Sousa, and uh, apparently you guys want to hear from me? <laughs> yes, we have quite a few people who are very excited to have you on the show. And actually, I wanted to ask you a few things because you're you're fairly new to the voice acting scene, correct? Yes. And now, are there different struggles with that? You know, we've, we've talked to you know, a few veterans, and I would assume that being sort of a newbie would be a whole different experience. It definitely is. I mean, you know, it's one thing if you're new and, you know, you don't know what to expect, but, I mean, being an anime fan as well, you know, getting to work with the people that, you know, you've heard, uh, like, on anime dubs and stuff like that, just seeing them in the hall and just being really casual with them is kind of a surreal feeling, and you sort of feel like you don't match up or, you know, not as good as you you, you should be compared to the talent that you're surrounded with. So. Well, at the same time, you're still learning as well. Yeah. It's always uh, a learning experience every time you go into the booth. And have you ever had any moments where you couldn't help but sort of fanboy, even though you're supposed to be coworkers now? <laughs> uh, many times. <laughs> In fact, when I met Josh, Josh Greeley, uh, the first thing I said is like, dude, I loved you in Comic Party. And he was like, yes! And I, we totally had this whole fanboy thing going on. But yeah, very often. I try to keep it to myself, but it doesn't always work out. Oh, you know, I feel your pain because while I, I don't get to step in the voice acting shoes, I do get to talk to many of the voice actors and voice actresses. And, you know, there's some times where it's like, I got to talk to so-and-so, but I have to yeah. I have to be cool. Nobody has to know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> and now, from what I know, you're, from, from what a lot of the fans tell me and a lot of the research I've done, your kind of big sort of uh, breakout role would be uh, Soul and Soul Eater, correct? That is true. And could you t elaborate a little bit on the character in the story? Um, he's, uh, I guess the title character, um, but the, he's not quite the main character. The main character is between him and Maka. Um, he is a, a weapon, and his goal is to become a death scythe, um, in which they have to uh, collect 99 human souls and... Uh, one witch soul. And uh, he goes on these adventures with his team. Uh, he's a, a student at this school for uh, Weapon and Meisters. Um, and there's this whole backstory to that, but that's going to be a spoiler. <laughs> we don't want you to give any spoilers, but uh, was that a <laughs> fun experience for you? Oh, sorry. Oh no, it's okay. It's um, we we might be cutting out a little bit, but uh, I would I was asking basically, was that a fun experience for you? Did you relate to that character at all? Um, it was a fun experience. I don't know how much I can relate with someone who turns into a scythe. That's uh, true. But, <laughs> and, and who eats souls, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. I mean, the show itself is just like when you're watching it, it's just a blast. But getting to work on it is a whole other story. I mean, it's a lot of uh outtakes, I guess you could say, uh, in the booth, because you just watch it, you're, you're preparing for the line, and you just realize, wow, this is ridiculous, um, so yeah. Now, do you still get uh, sort of intimidated when you go in the booth, or are you at a point now where you're starting to calm down, you're not so nervous? Um, a little bit of both. I still get intimidated, but I can control it a little better. Uh, before, I'd be just, like, shaking and being like, oh. Oh no! I have to record. Okay, I don't. I don't want to screw up. I know the fans are going to be critical, and uh, but now it's just a mental freakout rather than uh, mental and uh, physical. Oh no! I can understand that. Um, did you t take any acting classes or anything beforehand, or how did you sort of fall into I, the voice acting world? I uh, I had an interest in acting from about middle schoolish, and then I did some stuff here and there. Uh, and then just kind of happened onto this. It just you just kind of walked in the door, and it, that's how it happened, or did you? Not really. A demo? I mean, I sent my I sent in a demo. Um, 
and uh, one of the directors there heard it, uh, Leah Clark. Yay! Um, and she decided to give me a shot, and I said, why not? And now for you, you were a fan before you were actually a voice actor. How is it to be a fan in this crazy, insane world? <laughs> um, it's it's made me respect the industry a lot more and, like, the the talent behind cre uh, creating the anime and even bringing it to stateside. Um, and it it's really cool getting to play characters that either you've wanted to play or, you know, you never thought you could play. Um, like, being a part of Soul Eater was really awesome. I had heard about it beforehand, and getting to be, like, an actual character in the show was just more than I could ever ask. And now I'm wondering, is it, uh, w what was your very first time in the booth? How was that nerve-wracking moment? <laughs> um, it was it was definitely uh, nerve-wracking. Um, fortunately, I was doing um, bit parts in Walla. Uh, but what I didn't know is during my first session, I was with a bunch of other directors in the, in the booth as well. And so after I realized it, after being at Funimation, being like, wait, oh, you're, you're a direct, oh, and you're a director too? Oh, you heard me? Oh, okay, that's embarrassing. But I mean, it was, it was really cool, um, getting to actually do the things that you see, like, on the behind the scenes videos of, you know, how to be a voice actor or whatever. And now that you've done it for as long as you have, is there anything, any piece of knowledge you would like to have then that you have now? Um, relax. <laughs> uh, and I don't know. It, it's a constant learning process, so it just seems like the more with each day that I, I record, I learn something new, and it's like it's a whole pile of stuff that I wish I could have just told myself at the beginning to do, but yeah. No, I understand. And for everybody out there, we're going to take a very short break. Keep it tuned to 91.8 The Fan. Everything you want, nothing you don't. Everybody, we're back, and I haven't scared my guest yet. You're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan, and we were actually talking about behind-the-scenes conventions, the wonders, the scares, the, oh, my God, what is that Ooh. person wearing? <laughs> and yes, I'm, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm curious, uh, what conventions do you have coming up? Um, I have a few coming up. Uh, in a couple of weeks, there's uh, Anime North in Canada, so if you're in that area, Drop by and say hi. And then the weekend after that, uh, I'll be going to a brand new con in um, in Alabama called uh, Hamacon. And uh, and then yeah, I guess that's my more recent ones. Or yeah, that's actually pretty cool. So you get to uh, travel out of the U.S. just to meet some anime fans. <laughs> yeah, that is kind of cool. I mean, I've I didn't really do much traveling before, and now it's like, wow, I get to see the world. Just wait until they invite you to Australia and all the, in England and all those other places. Then you can just have a whole passport filled with stamps. That would be really cool. <laughs> <laughs> one day, one day. Um, but I will say that, uh, that that is really neat, and I'm, I'm trying myself to get to some Canadian conventions because I will – Talk to those can Canadians, eh? I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, on to... Uh, <laughs> where can uh, people keep updated? Like, if you have any other conventions that you have coming up. Um, let's see. I have... Well, my website has a, a list of my con schedule for whatever is coming up. Uh, it's frequently updated. But you can check my MySpace if I ever say, you know, oh, I'm going to Canada land or... Uh, I, I have a, a fan club, so uh, yeah, you can probably check with them. If they'll probably know 
faster than I do. Um, so yeah, um, Facebook. I also have a Twitter. Uh, I guess wherever you want to find me, I'll be there. I actually just found your Twitter. It was funny. I was um, uh, tweeting about how you were about to be on the show, and I checked our at replies, and then I was like, I'm about to be on the show in, in, in a few minutes, and I was like, hey, that, that, that's a coincidence there. So I did, I did not know you even had a Twitter before that. <laughs> Surprise. I am, um, I'm wondering, did you have any other projects that uh, just came out or that you're working on that you can talk about? Uh, unfortunately, no. Um, I, all of the things that I can talk about have already been released, and the things that I can't talk about are just floating in, uh, not announced land. Um, actually, one of the shows has been announced, but, or a couple of them have been announced, but not the cast, so it's, ah, non-disclosure. No, I understand. I'm, I'm going to outright assume what a few of those are without getting you in trouble because um, you, you work frequently f with Funimation and they just announced, oh god, like six new licenses and we were just like, whoa! <laughs> that is true. So, it, um, it might be in that batch. We'll see. <laughs> can't confirm or deny. You'll just have to wait. No, we don't want to get and you so in trouble. will I. <laughs> Does that ever bug you though? The the knowing that you're in something and you're so excited about it, that, but you can't say yes. anything. <laughs> yes. Oh, it, there's one show in particular, two shows. Okay, all of them in particular that I wish I could talk about, but I can't. I don't know why. <laughs> at the at the same time, we understand. But uh, when when you can talk about them, hopefully uh, we can get you back on and we can see what's up with those shows because they're probably going to be fantastic. Yes, well, I, I hope so at least. I think so. But, yeah. And now you frequently work with Funimation. Does that um, you know change anything? Does that uh, is that interesting to have sort of a home base and not have to jump from company to company? Uh. Yeah, in a way, yes. Um, right now, I'm just happy to at least be working for some company. Uh, when I feel brave enough, maybe I'll start branching out. But um, I'm, I'm cool where I am right now. That's definitely understandable. And I'm sure that uh, a lot of our listeners will love to stalk you at a, a, the convention you're going to. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, do you ever have any weird convention stories or any encounters with uh, with fangirls or fanboys of the third kind? Um, not really. I mean, I've only been to, like, two as a guest. And, like, the first one I went to was in New York. Um, and there was, like, everybody else in Seoul either there, and nobody knew who I was, so that didn't happen. Um, I think the most awkward thing that happened was that I went to this, uh, they had this mural, this chalk mural that this guy did of Soul Eater, because uh, we premiered uh, the show there. And I thought I was supposed to be there, like the rest of the cast, but I think it meant just the characters, like the, the mural, the characters there. And uh, I showed up, and then I kind of got cornered accidentally. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> signing things and, you know, talking to people. And it wasn't really bad, but just... I did not expect that, and since I was like up against a pillar and everyone was circling around, I had I couldn't get out. Um, but I got to meet some cool people nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's that's really cool. And uh, at the same time, you you enjoy anime, and you're you're kind of, kind of a geek like us, so you understand our, our geekish tendencies. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I was wondering, is there anything else you'd like to tell the listeners out there? Um. Thanks for all the support, and, I don't know, eat your vegetables? <laughs> That's a first. That's actually a first, so I'll, I'll give you that one. <laughs> Good. And I'm wondering, um, before we let you go, if you'd be willing to participate in a 91.8 The Fan tradition. Uh, sure. <laughs> it's not painful, yeah. I promise. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Essentially, we ask everybody who comes on if they'd be willing to do a bump for us, a.k.a. say a line for us. Sure. Awesome. And wait, we do this... <laughs> wait, it depends on what the line is. I'm not going to trick, am I? 
<laughs> no, we're not gonna we're not gonna put you in a in a very silly situation. We but we do do it live on air, so if you do make bloopers, everybody gets to hear it. Fantastic. Oh, God. <laughs> we basically ask if you could say, "My name is I do this," and you're tuned into ninety one point eight The Fan. Do you think that's okay? <laughs> My name is, I can't, do I fill in those blanks? Yes, I, you I know that's some question. I'm being stupid. Anyway. It's, right. we, we've literally had voice actors come on and be like, um, I do this, blah, blah, and they do it in their official voice, and they're like, nope, I already did it, I'm not doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, um, what, what was it, the last one, 90? And you're tuned 90. into 91.8 The Fan. You're tuned into 91.8 The Fan. All right. I'm going to start making up numbers. All right. Do, do I have a do I have a cue or, or just whenever, whenever you're I'm ready? <laughs> All right. Hi, my name is Micah Solusad, and I play Soul Eater Evans in Soul Eater, and you're tuned into 91.8 The Fan. Check it out. Hey, that wasn't so hard, and you survived. <laughs> oh, yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show. We definitely enjoyed having you, and hopefully we can have you on in the future when you have uh, more projects to promote. Yes, thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure. And for everybody out there who missed any of this interview, why do you got to keep missing my interviews? I'm going to come after you with a staple gun. But you can catch this interview on the website in the next few days, so keep it tuned to 91.8 Fan. Everything you want, 91.8.